What you are about to witness is a debate between the tropical and sidereal points of view. A debate is not a fight. A debate is an opportunity for usually two people to present two points of view on an issue. My guest will always have 10 minutes to present his or her argument, point of view, opinion, whatever they want to present in the 10 minutes which will be followed by me having four minutes to reply to it, which means not to bring up something new from outer space or something out of the blue. I have to respond to the points that they brought up. And then, finally, the guest has one minute to give a final statement. One or two minutes. So it'll be ten minutes, four minutes, one minute, and then it'll switch around. So then I'll have ten minutes, the guest will have four minutes, and then I'll have a minute or two. So that's what it is. It is not going to be a fighting match. It's not going to be an ego thing. It's not going to be a, I'm better than you. One way is right. One way is wrong. Blah, blah, blah. It's a chance for everybody to hear the information out in the open and thereby be able to form a more educated and informed opinion on this important topic. I would like to thank Richard Fiddler for being the first guest to come into this debate. Richard has been teaching and practicing astrology since he was a teenager in the early 90s. And for almost as long, he's been very, very educated and invested and involved in metaphysics. In the mid-90s, he joined the Pretoria Lodge of the Theosophical Society, where he taught astrology and acted as a librarian. He's a well-known professional astrologer and teacher. He's been published in magazines like The Mountain Astrologer. He's going to be an interesting person to discuss this topic with because he started out using conventional modern Western astrology, which tends to be tropical, but in 1997 began exploring Jyotish, which tends to be sidereal, and then started to integrate the two together. So I really look forward to hearing what he has to say on this topic of tropical versus sidereal zodiacs. And also I'm very interested in hearing what he's going to comment on what I have to say about it. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Vic, for this uh, opportunity to, to discuss this with you. I'm going to just jump straight into it. Um, I'm going to start with quoting something uh, that you posted on your site that, that, that struck a chord with me. You wrote, uh, <clears throat> I'm not concerned with so-and-so's experience or interpretation if it contradicts the clear statements of Shastra. Western people may not understand this epistemology, but at least those of you who purport to be Vedic and Indian should know the validity of this outlook. The Shastra, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and Surya Siddhanta or others define the zodiac as a tropical entity, therefore the case is closed. So <clears throat> this is probably one of the points we disagree on most, I think. <clears throat> and I have a question. That is, the ancient sources you consider the final and absolute authority in this matter not clearly and unambiguously warn against the error of using a sidereal zodiac. If they were really clear about what they were defining, they would have realized the possibility for confusion. Why do they seem to have lacked the foresight to anticipate the potential for error? I don't believe they generally considered the alignment of the sidereal constellations with the tropical zones to be arbitrary and temporary. In my view, <clears throat> this substantially weakens the authority of such scriptural definitions. If an ancient source clearly articulates the difference between the two paradigms and explains <clears throat> why one was to be considered exclusively correct, it would have more to contribute to resolving the zodiac problem. Now I found this in the Wikipedia, which I also find kind of curious. <clears throat> it says there, earlier Greek astronomers like Eudoxus spoke of a vernal equinox at 15 Aries, while later Greeks spoke of the vernal equinox at 8 and then 0 in Aries which suggests the use of a sidereal zodiac in Greece before Ptolemy and Hipparchus. <clears throat> Perhaps the astrological schematizers of roughly 2,000 years ago simply seized on the convenient but temporary opportunity to merge two ways of structuring a 12-fold division of the zodiac. There is every indication that they were not generally aware of the longer-term implications of doing so in relation to the precession of the equinoxes. It seems they did not expect the sidereal tropical alignment to change. This helps to make some sense of both 12-fold divisions of the ecliptic employing an identical structure and identical symbols. It also helps to explain why there was not a tropical zodiac in its current form thousands of years prior to the vernal equinox arriving at the beginning of sidereal Aries. 
I suspect the tropical zodiac owes its symbolism to the older zodiacal constellations. And when planets arrive at zero degrees of the tropical cardinal signs, or rather when they arrive at the plainly manifested amplification of their influence in the world, I believe this much based on experience and observation. Could this be because these points are analogous to the angles of the horoscope? If so, this would justify the projection of houses from these anchor points, which is essentially what the tropical zodiac is. This does not necessarily invalidate the sidereal zodiac. The argument for a tropical zodiac is far stronger than the argument against a sidereal zodiac where I wrote that the tropical zodiac is here depicted as houses of a world horoscope in which the equinox is the ascendant and the outer signs are sidereal. Uh, <clears throat> you might be familiar with Sri Yukteswar's comparable way of uh, using the equinoxes as, as, as a marker through the zodiac in a, in a 24,000 year precession cycle. And I'm just uh, putting this up uh, just to underline that this isn't just the new age hippie idea, you know, of the age of Aquarius and all of that. Now, regarding the nakshatras, <clears throat> is it not curious that Ravati, fully contained in sidereal Pisces, is represented as a fish, literally the same symbol? Maga, the throne room for Leo, you know, it's such a tight fit. Pushya is fully contained in, this, in the sign Cancer and is represented as the udder of a cow. I mean, Cancer is literally the breasts. Rohini, fully contained in sidereal Taurus, is depicted as an ox cart. On top of that, Rohini is also the favorite wife of the moon, and Taurus happens to be the sign of the, of the moon's exaltation. Are all of these mere coincidences? Robert Hand said the following about the zodiac problem. <clears throat> he said, I believe we have to regard the tropical side of the controversy as yet another example of a historical pseudo problem created by anachronistically projecting a modern problem with modern points of view back onto the ancients. It was not a problem with which the ancients were seriously concerned. Given the limits of the computational accuracy, both systems would have given them the same results. This is a question we have to resolve for ourselves. An appeal to history will not work. Or at least I, I'm inclined to say that we can find historical evidence or precedents for both approaches. I believe that the ultimate proof of the pudding is an experience and the results of interpretation. And I actually want to here look at just two charts, one of them being Hitler. You know, arguably the most notorious and effective warm hunger of history. The Fuhrer, the leader, excitable and passionate. If you look at the two charts, I'm sure you have looked at this. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I find it hard to get around uh, the, the sun uh, being exalted in, in, in a sidereal system and being a whole lot, lot weaker in, in the tropical, not to speak of Mars being in its detriment uh, uh, in, in Taurus as opposed to being in its own sign. There's also a very clear overall fire emphasis in the sidereal. Uh, picture all the more because it, it, the sun and moon end up in either the fire signs in the side real picture or the, the earth signs in, in the tropical. Also, in, in Hitler's tropical chart, Venus creates Malavya Yoga, the Mahapurusha Yoga of Venus. Surely that doesn't compare to having Hitler have Rishaka Yoga, which is the Mahapurusha Yoga of Mars. Then Nikola Tesla arguably one of the most significant inventors in history, lifelong bachelor, hypochondriac, meticulous mechanical genius, very, very clever man. <clears throat> in his tropical chart, Taurus is the ascendant. Venus, as ascendant lord, is in Cancer. In the sidereal chart, Aries is the ascendant. Mars, the ascendant lord, is in Virgo, in the sixth house, in a Mercury-ruled sign. Okay, the ascendant lord takes you straight to where you would want to go in the sidereal picture whereas it takes you straight to domesticity in, in, in the tropical. Uh, you know, the, the sun and several other planets are in domesticated cancer. The moon is in romantic and mate-seeking Libra, whereas in the, in the sidereal picture, both luminaries are in Mercury-ruled signs, with several other planets in Mercury-ruled sign, signs. And in my view, this shows him to be exceedingly clever. Mercury is in Gemini in both approaches, but there's far less overall emphasis on Mercury. You know, you wouldn't nearly as, in, as instantaneously see that this is an absolute genius, a highly strong mercurial person. Moreover, in the side real picture, Jupiter in its own sign there creates Hamsha Yoga from the Chandra and Surya Lagnas. And, you know, a strong Jupiter like that further uh, accentuates the capacity for, for erudition. So, finally, <clears throat> I realized that, uh, of course, one of 
two potentially cherry picked examples of the side real zodiac seeming to more clearly generate an accurate narrative doesn't finally and unequivocally prove anything. However, theoretical and historical arguments alone do not close the case either. Astrology is not a purely academic or intellectual pastime. It's a technique that should work and produce measurable results. Please provide or participate in results-based comparative research and testing. Demonstrate the superior efficacy of the tropical zodiac and chart interpretation. Maybe then and only then can the case be closed. And that is my story. So the, the thing of like, let's, let's talk about charts and which system works better. My feeling there is that interpreting charts is way more complicated than agreeing upon a fundamental definition of something. Like if we could say red is, red is this color and blue is that color, that's a lot easier than saying how to make a painting. So if we can't even sort out our um, logic on what's the definition of the zodiac, we probably aren't capable of agreeing upon the system by which we will evaluate charts. So, all right. so I think it's kind of jumping the gun to say, let's look at charts. There's way more open for argument. I, I can argue that, well, you're looking at it the wrong way. You should look at this Lord in that house instead of this and that. So it'll go off chart. And the other thing is you, we could pull up five charts and say these five charts are, are easier to see. The outcome is easier to see when you look at it sidereally and we pull up another five charts and you'll see that the outcome is easier to see tropically. So I don't even think that that will be particularly conclusive if we go that route. The, the other um, statement that you made that, that stuck in my head was, I thought it was powerful, was the part about the nakshatra symbols. The, you know, Leo is fully contained, uh, Maga is fully contained in Leo and it's a throne, et cetera, et cetera. My response there is, who came up with these symbols and when? So they may, they may have been introduced after the concept of, of the marriage between the nakshatras and the rashis. Because in the old texts, they don't mention the symbols associated with things. They mention the name of a nakshatra, the deva of it, and they may give a, a prayer to the nakshatra, or they may give a sutra for the nakshatra. And what I've seen in practice is most of the, not practice, but like practically looking at the, at the theories of nakshatras is uh, a lot of the visuals of the symbols come from the actual shapes of the constellations. Like those are probably the older ones. Then the opening thing that you opened with, with the quote, that quote was really meant to, you know, I, I can get a little bit like jabby sometimes. So that quote was kind of like a jab on people that are saying, we're Vedic astrologers. We're Vedic astrologers. And so the point that I was trying to make there is if you're Vedic, then you have to accept Ve the fundamental premise of being Vedic is to accept a certain epistemology, which is that the Vedas are the, are the ultimate authority. I'm not saying that, if, that this is valid or that everybody should do that, but I'm saying that if you say I'm a Vedic so-and-so or such and such, it's meaningless to say that if you're not actually Vedic, because the fundamental thing of being Vedic is that the Veda is the fundamental authority. So whether or not these books are, are super wonderful uh, communications from God or not, my point in that one is if you're a Vedic astrologer, you better take these statements from the Puranas and the Puranas especially seriously, and the Puranas say that it's a tropical zodiac, and they don't, and this is unequivocal. And then uh, the, a point you raised was, how come they didn't foresee that in the future there would be a, a problem with the sidereal thing? Well, I don't, I don't know, but it doesn't mean that they don't define it as tropical. Maybe it means that they're not perfect or that they haven't seen everything fully. So that's my four minutes. And now Excuse me. you get a little time to re respond. Okay. Or respond. Uh, I've got a minute. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Briefly, um, you know, regarding your comments about the, the whole approach uh, of looking at different charts uh, and as a means of trying to test this. Look, I understand that, that interpretation is quite nuanced, but I also believe that there are some very fundamental principles that are agreed upon. 
And I think that these very strong basics, they're not so nuanced and weird that you can't kind of agree on them. Like, for example, I referred to the ascendant lord. Where is it? It's a basic rule. No one could say that's a secondary rule. It's a primary rule. You know? um, uh, it's something like the formation of Mahapurusha Yoga. You know, this is the kind of thing that's supposed to show that a planet is becoming almost dominant in the chart because of its strength, its dignity by sign and being angular. This is not pulling out some sort of very, should we say, debatable secondary rule. And this is what I'm proposing, is even coming to some consensus on a bunch of rules that we do consider fundamental and seeing how that works. And, you know, essentially, I'm inviting you to, 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 to demonstrate, however you interpret charts, uh, uh, you know, to, to demonstrate how the narrative tropically uh, uh, is consistently uh, clearer that, uh, than the side drill. Um, uh, I'm not saying, as uh, I agree, it's not a simple thing, but I don't think it's so complicated that it can't be done and that there isn't this potential to arrive at a consensus regarding certain principles we'll work with. with regarding the nakshatras, <clears throat> look, I, I, I won't pretend to know uh, you know better than I am sure about exactly when they started adding those symbols to the picture and all of this. I, I simply find that those coincidences are, are very striking and there's not just one of them, right? Like, I, it, 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 it doesn't quite, in my opinion, explain it away that we don't know when they named, when they, they introduced those images or, or symbols. Um, it, it, it does definitely seem to, to lock the, the nakshatras into or deeply associate them with the sidereal zodiac. And for example, that business about the moon being uh, exalted uh, uh, in Taurus, where the moon uh, has its favorite wife, that also just doesn't seem to me to be a coincidence that easily goes away. You know? And as you know, that does not happen if you disconnect the zodiac from the nakshatras. Right? Okay. It's, you lose that. Okay, and lastly, about that, that initial quote, well, you know, it did seem there that, that um, you know, this idea of accepting authority unquestioningly, even if you're Indian, even if you're Vedic, I don't think that that's necessarily the, how anybody should go about seeking knowledge. So having respect for these texts is, is, is excellent. But... Uh, you, you said, you know, uh, or, or, um, I asked her, why did they not foresee this, this problem? I think it's a fair question, because if these people have this kind of omniscience that is worthy of unquestioning respect, uh, respect right, they need to demonstrate that by, with that level of, of uh, foresight. And, and look, but, uh, we leave that there, and that's, that's in short. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not allowed to respond, so... Okay, so shall I do, now I'll do my presentation. So first I want to talk about where we agree, where tropical, the tropical point of view and the sidereal points agree. Everybody agrees that there's 12 signs and that they're 30 degrees each. Everybody agrees that the signs are composed of elements, modes, and rulers, planetary rulers, elements like earth, water, fire, air, modes like cardinal, fixed and dual. Uh -oh. And everybody agrees even which sign, you know, which signs belong to which modes and elements and rulers. So there's a fantastic amount of agreement. We're actually talking about the same 12 signs, that's for sure. Where we disagree is simply on this point. Where do the 12 divisions start? And the two points of view are, first of all, that one, one camp, let's say, believes that the 12 divisions start from a star or in reference to a star. And that's why it's called sidereal because sidera is Latin for star. And then the other point of view says it starts from some kind of a waypoint in the sun's orbit, sun's apparent orbit. And that waypoint in Greek is called tropos and that's why that system is called tropical. So we agree on what the signs are exactly, but where we disagree is where are they? Where do, uh, and especially the key point is where do they begin? And so the big question is which one of these viewpoints is more logical and more consistent with the classical definitions and recorded astrological history? I believe that the issue, the two camps can be 
the contention between the two camps can be resolved by trying to figure out which is more logical and which is more consistent with classical definitions. So to look at the classical definitions and the history of the thing, what we find is that more or less, generally speaking, Western, outside of India, almost everybody uses a tropical concept of the 12 zodiac signs and inside of India, almost everybody uses the sidereal one. But it's, let's look at the Western sidereal argument and the Indian tropical argument. Uh, the Western sidereal as far as I understand, it's basically based on the concept that the zodiac originates in Babylonian constellations. So it's, supposed, it's fundamentally and originally stellar. So therefore sidereal. This is, a, this is certainly, I could see how they would come to this conclusion from the data that they have, but I think that they have to filter out or ignore this other fact that they also have in their historical data is that the Babylonians had a 12 division tropical system concurrent with an 18 division sidereal system. And so actually the system that's more like the one that we're using today is not the 18 division constellational system that they're using but the 12 division tropical system. And as for which one came first, or if, if any did at all, which I don't believe, I believe that they're concurrent ways of looking at the sky, stellar and solar. So it can't really be borne out historically with, that one came first. The Indian argument for the tropical, the unusual Indian argument is, look, the definitions in the Indian texts are exclusively and explicitly tropical. So what I mean by exclusively is there's no, there's no competition with this definition. It's the only definition that you get. And what I mean by explicitly is it's just obvious. There's no extension of logic or anything. And so to give you one example, this one would be from Surya Siddhanta, which would be not a Vedic text, but um, at, mathematical astronomy. The texts that will give you astronomy are either going to be the astronomical sections of Puranas or the mathematical books that are literally about astronomy. So the example of the zodiac definition from Surya Siddhanta, it says the two solstices and two equinoxes are the thread on which the core of the zodiac exists. There are two borders between each point. It takes the sun six months to reach the northern solstice after entering Capricorn and six months to reach the southern solstice after entering Cancer. The months of the year are thus identical to the 12 signs beginning with Aries. So this is like a very explicit, the, based on the tropos or the, the solstices and the equinoxes. Now, let's talk about logic. The logic of the thing. The three modes. So. The zodiac signs, we all agree that, that they have three modes, cardinal, fixed, and dual. If it's not for the solstices and equinoxes, what is it that grants the modality to the particular signs? They, if you take it on the solstices and equinoxes, then when the sun crosses a cardinal point, like when the sun, sun crosses one of those tropos, a solstice or an equinox, it becomes cardinal. The whole symbolism of cardinal is being new, ambitious, entering a new area. And then when it's in the next sign, it stays in that area, it's fixed. And then when it approaches the third sign, the sun actually literally slows down in its movement, starts to like equivocate on whether it's continuing to go north or south, et cetera. So it actually literally becomes dual as it approaches the solstice or the, or the equinox. Uh, not the equinoxes, but the solstices especially. So that's for the uh, modes. For the four elements also, the tropical way of looking at the zodiac logically explains where the four elements things come from. So if it's not for the cardinal directions, which is, is a very interesting way of a phrase, cardinal direction, cardinal signs, cardinal directions. If it's not for the cardinal directions of the solstice and the equinoxes, then what is it that grants the signs their elements? Why, why is Aries fire? Why is Taurus earth? Um, so the system here is the ascending equinox. So ascending equinox is commonly called vernal equinox. I call it ascending equinox because I want to get away from the idea that it's hemisphere specific. But the ascending equinox is where this, the sun crosses the, the equator. And so it's the celestial equivalent of the sun rising over a horizon. So it's sunrise and it's the, e it's the eastern, the cardinal direction of the east. And 
and then therefore, you know, the, the descending equinox is west, and then the upper point, the northern solstice, will be north, and this, the lower sub, sub, uh, solstice will be south, celestially speaking. So east is associated to fire and dharma. That's where the sunrise happens and the fire comes out and you get the qualities of fire there. And things begin, there's leadership. The west where things, where the sun goes down, relaxation happens, people take a break. South is earth, the earth below your feet, the stability, the north. In India, it's easy to see north is moksha or water element because it's so throughout the Puranas that the symbolism of walking north means that you're taking sannyas and leaving, but north is, is classically associated to water and moksha and introspection and things like that. So you get this, the, the tropical zodiac explains the positioning of the elements by reference to the four cardinal points and their relationship to elements and then trines from those points. If this can be done, if the, if, the position of the elements can be explained sidereally. I don't know. I haven't heard it. And the planetary rulers also, it's fairly straightforward. This, the speed of the planet determines which sign it rules from the sun, whether it's sidereal or tropical, it's fairly straightforward. But the thing that falls in tropical, in the favor of the tropical way of looking at it is why would this, why would the sun go to Leo? take Leo as its domicile instead of Aries and Sagittarius, the other fire signs. If it's not for the part, for the point that Leo is up north where the king goes, Leo is, this, is the superior property. And, you know, if it's tied to the northern cardinal direction by the tropos, then it makes sense. But if it's sidereal, it wanders from that. Then the one that I think is the most compelling is this, the, 12 equal, the logic of 12 equal divisions. If they're constellations, why are they equal sized? And why are there 12 of them and not something else? Like actually, when we do constellational based astrology in Babylon, they have 17 or 18. In Egypt, they have 33. China and India is 27 or 28. Why, what 12, right? So the signs aren't stars. This is why there's 12, the, the animation is showing it. It's the motion of the sun and the moon and why they're all equal divisions. And it shows that the, the signs are not stars. They're not stars. So where's the logic in saying that they are bound to a star for their starting point? They're divisions of the sun's orbit around the earth. So isn't it more logical to say that they should be defined by the interaction of the sun? You know, their division of the sun's apparent orbit around the earth. So isn't it more logical that the relationship between the sun and the earth should define where they begin and end? They're not stars. Isn't it less logical to say that a star should define where they begin and end? And if we do say, no, I think it should be a star. What is that star? Should, wouldn't you expect that if the zodiac should begin from a star, that there should be some pretty kind of visible star at zero Aries? So that's a, so in conclusion then, uh, I get tropical with an exclamation point. The tropical zodiac it rationally explains the nature of the zodiac signs. Like it rationally explains why there's modes where they are, why there's elements where they are, why the planets rule, and why there's 12 equal signs. And so it's a more logical choice. It also has the benefit of being in line with the definitions that are recorded. And although there are many different ways of looking at history, it's not against the historical data. In fact, it's quite compatible with the historical data. I do believe that sidereal and tropical are two valid ways of looking at space, but I don't think that the 12 divisions are to be seen in both ways. I think that we should use the 18, 33, or 28 for our sidereal stuff. And my final statement would be the concept of 12 sidereal divisions probably arose from the fact that the stars were used as reference points to, vis to visually verify early zodiac calculations. And that's my, that's my presentation. So I think I went over 10 minutes. I went to like 11 minutes, I apologize. That's fine. So I'll give you four or five minutes. All right, sure. <clears throat> All right, look, I hope I managed to, to address uh, 
most uh, or enough of, of, of your points. Um, you know, there's a lot of information there. Okay, but but one of these, um, well, okay, firstly, I, I, I get how the, the, the seasonal uh, tropical zodiac um, works with, with the, the, the distribution of the, the, uh, the three crosses and, and all of that that you said. And, uh, you know, you recall I, I, I said that um, the argument for a tropical zodiac, in my opinion, is stronger than the argument against a sidereal zodiac. And because I, I do get the logic of the tropical zodiac in many respects, I've long after converting to the side drill, I've often tried to get back into it. And I've just found, to be honest with you, that it's harder to read the charts. That's simple. That, I know that, that doesn't prove anything, but that's been my experience. But now about this, this issue uh, of um, why, are there, why would there be 12 constellations? You know, uh, not 18 as was, was originally uh, the case. <clears throat> you know, as I was preparing the, for this, uh, you know, I realized that astrologers have always been schematizers. We have 365 days in a year, but we use 360 degrees. You know, are there 27 or are there 28 nakshatras? You know, what I'm trying to get at is that the, the, the systems often evolve. It's not static. Um, I don't see any problem with them at, cert, at a certain point deciding that we had this constellational arrangement previously. We viewed it this way previously, but somebody has a eureka moment and realizes, wouldn't it be amazing we've got the, 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 the uh, equinox occurring in this perfect alignment with these visible constellations? Uh, and it, it allowed for um, what, what, what I uh, noted, what I raised earlier, it allowed for a merging of the sidereal and tropical paradigms because, you know, I think it's a very important point to note that uh, to the ancient astrologers, it would not have been an arbitrary matter that the constellation of Aries was where tropical, the tropical zodiac would place Aries. You know, if all that was needed for a tropical zodiac Right, is was to 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 uh, keep track of its position was to uh, link itself to one or two stars. Why bother creating all these other constellations? You know, if if, it, if the tropical zodiac was 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 sufficient in itself, or the the original concept, if you like, you know, why is it that it, that it came about when there was that alignment between the tropical and the sidereal zodiacs? You know, this is for me an important point. If the tropical zodiac existed in its current form 5,000 years ago, I think it would have been a lot easier to, to view it as being a, um, the, the zodiac and a thing in itself independent of the constellational zodiac. Again, I believe that about 2,000 years ago, it was then possible to marry these two ways of uh, uh, dividing the, the ecliptic into 12. And I get why they would want to do, divide the ecliptic into 12 in relation to the 12 moons and all of that. But okay, I, I think my core point there is that uh, the, 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 the view that the tropical zodiac was um, the zodiac it, it is for me a little d d difficult to believe because it, it, it insinuates that around the time that it came into being, the astrologers were uh, viewed the visible constellations occurring in just the right place as relatively arbitrary. This is what I what I struggle with the most. Um, just one sec. One question I've also well, obvious question you probably heard is um, what about the northern southern hemisphere issue? You know, the, the, the zodiac symbolism works perfectly in the Northern Hemisphere with, with the spring uh, arriving, with the sun in Aries, with the birth of things, then, you know, everything getting richer and fatter in Taurus and, and all of that. But in the Southern Hemisphere, that doesn't work. You don't have that problem uh, with the sidereal zodiac. Uh, now, maybe in conclusion, regarding my, my, my comments here, um, <clears throat> you know, I said, the argument for a tropical zodiac is stronger than the argument against a sidereal zodiac. I, 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 I get that there's something in the tropical zodiac, and I try to address this also in showing the tropical zodiac as houses of the world, which doesn't mean that the constellations or, and sidereal signs don't, you know, don't exist. 
Okay. Okay. So I'll close up. I'll try to respond to some of some of the things. Let's see. I'm gonna need my glasses to read my own handwriting. Uh -huh. So you presented a concept that the zodiac evolved from the 18 into the 12 in Babylon because like an eureka, eureka moment. But I think the evidence shows that they coexisted. And it's not clear that one, one evolved into the other. The other one is why not just a star? If you're just fast fact checking, you just need an eye and I'm sure from a star. If you just, so why go, why be so verbose? Well, pe those pe people love to decorate things. You know, why make, why make beautiful pictures in the sky either? You know, so they have a lot of time on their hands in the old days, more than we do, and they decorate things. But I think actually the real reason for that answer is, the real answer to that question is they actually didn't know for a while that there was such a thing as sidereal zodiac or tropical zodiac. They just had a zodiac. And when they started to, co when they started to compute it, they started to say, great, we, you know, the reason why they couldn't use it initially is because they couldn't do the computations. They had to do everything visually and use, use stellar omens. But after they could start using computations, they would want to say, is our computation accurate? Well, well that's, well, here, there's Taurus over there and there's Gemini and there's, we, we can see it. Let's make something we can see. And then later on, they realized, I think, with Hipparchus, right? A while after their math developed, then another mathematician came and said, well, it's not exactly right. But they already had developed those things. You said that it seems like it's a lot of a coincidence. Like it's these, these uh, constellations are in just the right place. I also just like to make the point, they're not actually just, just right. Like, actually, they're quite different. Virgo, for example, is quite big. And like the Lahiri star, which is what? Chitra. The Chitra Paksha star is actually on Virgo's thigh. But literally, it's supposed to be at, her, at the end of her toe. So um, Virgo's very big. Pisces is very big. Aries is very small. It's not really exactly at all. So it's not just right. Northern Southern, the, I'll finish up with the Northern Southern thing. Uh, seasonal Zodiac. The zodiac, the zodiac seasons are related to the Zodiac signs, but seasons... Like it goes from the zodiac signs to the seasons, but not some se seasons don't create the zodiac signs. All of the symbolism of what constitutes a zodiac sign is contained in the planet that rules it, the mode that it's made, you know, the, the mode that the sun operates with, the element that it's made from, and a little bit about what order, natural order it's in from, from Aries. It's, it's nothing like you don't actually need Aries to be spring for Aries to be Aries. In fact, spring is quite Venusian. The coming of spring is quite a Venusian affair and Aries is quite not, not Venusian. So it's the idea that the, the tropical zodiac is seasonal is just a mistake and tropical zodiac users perpetuate the mistake because sometimes it's really handy. Well, uh, Capricorn is cold and so it's wintry too. But it's just the wrong way of looking at it. And also the problem doesn't go away if it's sidereal because it's a, you're, still, you're still basically down there. It's still basically summer in the Southern Hemisphere when you're around Aquarius. So that's, those are my replies. I just want to end up by saying this was great. I, I was just the only a problem that I had was I, I hope that in the beginning of the thing during your presentation, people could hear your voice well because there was some kind of a connection problem the voice is breaking up a little bit i apologize for that if that comes, doesn't come across well in the in the reading. well look uh, you know uh, just the tec technical thing yeah but thank you Vic. Yeah, it was good and uh, you know i enjoyed it and uh, it was it was good for me also to to you know dig a little deeper and think think about what i believe about all of this so you know it's it's been stimulating so i appreciate that thank yeah. you yeah and i have to appreciate you for do, for doing this because you don't even know me. We never met before. I, I'm kind of a crazy person. I say things that are really like intense. I could have done some weird stuff with you on this. You kind of came in here trusting me that I would do this in a rational way. So I really appreciate that. And hopefully more people will, will uh, take your lead and come. Cause what I want to do is right. discuss not our, not like win or be victorious or anything sure. like that. Sure. Thank you sure. so much. Great. Thank you. Vic. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope this debate was very useful. 
and enlightening. Please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the future debates that we have on the same topic. I plan to bring multiple guests on to present their views on the trop on the sidereal side. And check out the playlist that this video is in or eventually will be in if you want to see all of those in succession. Thank you very much. See you next time.